So what is really intriguing to me right now is as we take this next leap to like understanding scientifically, how does somebody in a dispensa event eliminate cancer through every single organ system in their body? How is that physically possible? And so my lab has been working kind of backwards into this by studying Roundup initially. We started to really witness change in water structure inside the human cells. Water structure inside of human cells will tie us back to the virome in a second. But water structure inside a human cell is miraculous. Uh, Let me pause here one second, and I want you to pick up this thought right where it is. So remember, I want to just say that I've learned more about water from my cats oh, wow. than I'd ever thought possible. Because again, I've heard this. I've heard about the structure of water and the energy of water, and I've heard about all of these things. But I've reduced it in my materialistic reductionist way which is still a pattern that i hold in many things okay well this mountain valley water which i religiously drink is like this is the best you know it has the right minerals and it's the right you know it comes from the earth and i trust that but the cats have taught me something else because i could pour this mountain valley water and i could pour it in a dish and i leave that dish flat and leave it there for two days they will not fucking touch that water but i've flushed the toilet I flush the toilet and the water's swirling and my shit goes down the drain and there's probably a little bit of shit still in the toilet and whatever other fucking cleaners in there, but they'll choose that. I mean, these animals are intelligent. They'll choose that water that's been circulating and cycling and or alive, they prefer it out of the faucet, but they'll take the toilet, but the alive, it's like living water. It's like they can sense that there's something different about the water as it's alive as it's moving as and there's something happening there yeah. that we're not that like we're not aware of and they're mesmerized by it they'll just every time we take a shower they'll just look at the water like they're looking at a psychedelic vision and, and they probably are seeing it i yeah. i hypothesize if we could get in the eyes of cats we'd be like whoa they can see energy they can see the energy of other prey like life forms that are they see it they see it in a way that we can't even imagine Maybe they feel it, but I think they see it. And I think they can see it and feel it in the water itself. And so this to me has really opened my mind to, you know, at least some of the things that that you're talking about, how water is far more than we want to condense it to from this, this kind of like microscopic view. What's happening at the atomic level what, that you're witnessing there is clumping. And so when you have stagnant water or water that goes through non-natural flow states, uh, if you put a 90-degree bend in a plumbing line, which there's thousands in every single household, all those 90-degree turns break it out of normal flow state and you get clumping of the water molecules. And so coming out of the tap or sitting in a glass of water that you just poured, typically you've got clumps of 75 to 100 water molecules that are clumped together. And they've, they're in an electrical relationship to each other, a biochemical and kind of colloidal structure. When you put it into a natural vortex around a pebble in a stream or swirling in that toilet bowl, as you described, that vortex energy that's there, it breaks that organization of those large clumps and you can get down to levels of 5 12 molecules of water which is now you know far more biologically active can be absorbed through cell membranes much better all of that so we have certainly learned to kill water through every mechanism that we do in municipal water systems and you know hydraulics around all of our our water systems let alone all the things that kill all the living things in the water, some of which is maybe helpful, but most of which over time, the fluoride, the yeah, chlorine, chlorine, the chlorine and herbicides, you know, being yeah. a residue of all of it. And so, yeah, it, that loss of life within is definitely losing that, that energetic state of the water. But interestingly, as soon as water passes into a cell, which is, remains one of the most mysterious things in biology, we still don't really know how water gets into a cell because we just have these passive channels called aquaporins in the surface of cells that have no pump mechanism. We have pumps for everything else, sodium, potassium, minerals, insulin. Like We have all kinds of ways to get crap into cells. Water being the most important thing for cellular health, we can't figure out how that thing knows how to passively push through a cell. There's no way to suck it in. But it seems to be related to the electrical potential across the cell membrane. So like a battery, the, the more you insulate between the positive and negative charge, the higher the potential energy there. And so it's by creating this 
extraordinary charge potential across a very small distance of a cell membrane with perfect uh, resistance through that phospholipid double membrane, you create an enormous electrical charge potential. And it's thought that it's the, the electrical charge potential that's being produced by the mitochondria as it translates light energy from your food back into light energy electrons is creating the electrical opportunity for water to enter the cell. And when it enters, it immediately crystallizes. When you've cut yourself, you've never leaked water out of yourself, which is so weird because you're 70% water. Well, what do you mean? What's blood? Blood is, is not from the cell, right? So you, okay. you, you'll have blood, which is a liquid state, but it's outside of the cell. Uh -huh. The cells, you, when you cut yourself, you'll disrupt millions, if not billions of, of human cells, skin cells, deep dermis, all of this. No water leaks out. It's just blood, you know. And in fact, in surgery, we're, we're good at, you know, keeping blood flow really tight. We inject with epinephrine all these little tricks to tense down that. So we can do huge surgeries with almost no bleeding. And so you're cutting through massive amounts of tissue. Uh, heart surgery is just so dramatic. And there is no leak. There's no water there because it's not a liquid state. It's actually in this fourth phase of water, which looks like a, a dense jello. And what it is, miraculously, is a crystalline structure of that H2O. And that crystalline structure lines up along the DNA of the strand of the virus or the human DNA that you receive from mom and dad to create an antenna system. And so the vibration of water around the double helix of the completed human DNA creates a vibrational antenna. And now when you hit that with light energy, it vibrates at a very specific frequency. And I believe that what gives you the ability to wake up every day thinking you're Aubrey and not me is not actually a cognitive process is actually a vibrational event where you always know. And if somebody came along and said, your names are not actually Aubrey, your parents lied to you, your name's Phil, that's no problem for you because you say, all right, I'm actually Phil, but you haven't lost track of who you are at that biologic level because you're still the same frequency of resonance. Right. So it's not, it, it doesn't dumb down to, well, that's my name. No, there's an awareness of self. There's a, a coherence of memory of your body that's held at the water structure and its resonance around the DNA strand. And so, so you think this accounts for, I was always thinking like, we were talking earlier because I've gotten an apprentice in body work and you know, energy work where I've been on someone's leg, let's say their left leg, and all of a sudden we're in the dark, I'm doing body work on their left leg in a full trance state and there's something in the fascia in, in their you know left quad or their IT band area or whatever, and I'm man manipulating the fashion, they burst into tears, having a memory, a vision of something that they were carrying from their mother, let's say, right? So- You're dowsing. Yeah, so this- So you're this, dowsing so in for this, water structure. And that's interesting because I was thinking like, well, so, you know, of course the body keeps the scores, great, great book about this, but I was thinking like, well, we found neurons in the heart. We found neurons in other places. I was thinking that maybe the memory was stored in neuronal, you know, just distribution through the fascia. But what you're saying is potentially, if the I'm hearing it, it might be the water. water. Memory's all in the water. Whoa. Memory's all in the water. We've never found a, a, a database in, in the brain or peripheral nervous system that allows for long-term memory. There's no, there's no structure. Uh, we have short-term memory in the hippocampus, which is a tiny little you know, size of an almond in the side of the brain. That's where we do short-term memory processing into long-term memory, but it disappears into this black box of long-term memory. We don't know where the hell that's happening <laughs> in the neurology side, but we know through you know, water structure that water carries memory at the molecular level in an exquisite state. And you know, there's been bizarre abilities now to look at atomic structure to understand vibrational input. Now, there's a TED talk, I think 10 years back or something like that maybe, but uh, that showed how, I think it was a Stanford group, had been able to reproduce a conversation that happened in a, in a room with a bag of chips, an open bag of chips, and they studied the atomic structure shift in the bag of chips to recreate the vibrational input that would have happened to create those you know, before and after events of the atomic structure of the chip bag. 
and then show that that can be then translated back into voice and and what what vi vibrational vowels had to be spoken to change those that atomic structure that's of a bag that's, that's mind-blowing even to fathom i don't even think i even understand it <laughs> nobody really does the point being vibration affects structure and the memory of water is in this interface between the crystal crystalline structure of the gel state of water in our cells and that electrical vibration from sunlight, from food and translation into energy, all of these things. The exciting thing that we are getting at to put this full loop on wh where are we right now in human history is we are right now losing fear and guilt. And it's not everybody. I think there's, like we said, a dichotomous event happening right now. But if you would like to participate in the future of humankind, I would invite everybody <laughs> to start to lose fear and guilt. And to do that, you have to lose judgment. There uh -huh. is no good and evil. There is no right and wrong. Yeah, asking a lot here, all Zach. Of these are, all of these are constructs of the human ego. Yep. We gotta let go of the, the judgment to say, what if we are actually light beings showing up right now for the highest vibrational potential? And as we see this dichotomous shift happening, perhaps for the first time in mass on the planet between fear and guilt and the freedom of it, we're creating a new potential for human biology to have a genetics that then will wrap the water in a new state where we start to lose the memory of all the trauma, the emotional BS, the, the denigrating belief systems, and our water itself starts to get stripped of that negative information. And the water structure in the cell of somebody who has freed themselves of fear and guilt, who has cancer, is likely to free themselves of that cancer because they are vibrating at a higher frequency. And so it's very intriguing that by the end of this decade, wouldn't it be interesting if there was at least a large segment of the population that started to be able to hold more light energy in the water structure of the human cell than's ever happened before? It's, I 100% believe that. I can feel it happening. I can th see things happening with people all around me that were impossible five years ago, 10 years ago. And perhaps it's because of the circles that I'm in, but I don't think so because it's the same people that I knew. And all of a sudden, universally, they're coming online, especially in the feminine, where all of a sudden they can get into a trance state and be channeling an energy that's so powerful that it's just, it's undeniable and devastating in its strength. And I say devastating in the most positive way, right? Like just utterly annihilating with how with how potent it is in, in the feminine voice and i've seen this like several several of my dear friends and sisters you know caitlin and deidre both i've known them both for 15 years and i've seen all of the sudden in the last few years just things click on and, and after this you know we're gonna go uh go to my farm and we'll check that out after this podcast and we're gonna go have a sound healing with vilana and i actually this makes me understand things even more because as i've been more in tune with my subtle body and also been deeper in my relationship a sacred relationship with ketamine and cannabis as a way to open myself to the void and bring my body's intelligence there with me and not heavy doses just light doses to open me open me to it i've been able to actually feel they call it sound healing and i always thought like that well that's a cool thing it sounds good and there must be a healer there who's doing the healing Right, I always like gave the credit to the energy of the person and the sound sounded cool, but I can actually feel the sound healing me. But I don't, under I don't understand it. I understood it as maybe vibration and whatever, but now thinking about the water in my body, I think it's actually reprogramming and restructuring some of the actual water in my, in my cells. It's, it's a really cool phenomenon is that what, actually what's happening is a remembrance. Yeah. Your water is remembering the original math. <laughs> and so sound healing works. If you've seen the sound vibration on an effect of a, a pool of water, you know, and see the different sacred geometry that emerges yeah. with different notes. Or with sand on a, on a plate. Sand on a plate. Yeah. You can see this beautiful sacred geometry, which is reflected in the structures of the universe, the way that supernovas occur in the vacuum space. You know, all of these sacred geometries happen all over the place due to vibrational input into the, you know, in this interface between the physical world and the, the quantum world. And so the exciting thing for me is realizing that nobody has ever healed anybody health always emerges from within. Mm. And it is a remembrance of your original structure, not some new develop of yeah, a new body. Yeah, yeah. And so- and the sound is a vector of remembrance. Sound is a vector to create the vibrational shape that becomes an antenna. And so that sacred geometry 
picks up universal information that's beaming down on the planet through gamma ray and all sorts of you know electromagnetic field radiation from the universe. And I believe this is actually how astrology works, is that the stars and their positions, the, the planets and theirs, the, the position of our planet in regard to that massive nuclear event that we call the sun at the moment of our birth is setting our water structure into a very specific vibration. And from that moment forward, we will receive all of the energetic information of the universe to the tune of that ge sacred geometry. Yeah. And so when somebody strikes that A, you know, tuning fork in an orchestra, all of the A strings start to vibrate. And so that's what's happening basically as you start to retune the human water structure through something like sound therapy, 